Welcome back to Open Line, Open Line tonight, if I can spit that out. Thank you for being with us. We are talking about your mental health, and we hope that you will participate in this conversation. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call, and we all know the past year, including the start of this one, has been very tough, and we want you to know that there are resources that you can tap into to help you just make it through the next week, the next year, the next day, whatever it may be. I have two experts joining us tonight, Tom Starling and Jackie Kavnar from the Mental Health America of the Mid-South. Thank you all both for being here. I wanna jump right into the screenings you all offer, and it sounds like that's the front door, that's the doorway into getting help. Tell me about those screenings, Tom. You know, I always laugh because we used to have people come by the office and pick up books and rent VHS tapes and then uh, that kind of dwindled, but people called all the time our helpline, and that's kind of dwindled. And now people are getting their help online, so we're there for them in that way too, just realizing that sometimes people just want a little privacy. They don't know the right mm -hmm. questions to ask. There's that stigma. And you could go online to our website or just Google MHA screenings, and you can find screenings that are evidence-based on depression, bipolar, anxiety, eating disorders, workplace wellness. I, I take the workplace wellness one every Monday morning, you know, so, <laughs> uh, but it's great just to kind of see, you know, well, what is depression? What is anxiety? What is bipolar? You can take them for your child. You could take them for yourself. And on the back end of those screenings, which might be seven questions, nine questions, again, all evidence-based, on the back end of those screenings, it will direct you to some really great resources. Where could I make an appointment? How do I share this screening result with my primary care physician? How do I share this with a friend or with a family member? And that type of information is so important because sometimes we just don't have the words to describe those feelings, especially men. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all anonymous, evidence-based, free, online. Uh, so you don't have to worry about anybody reaching out to you or collecting your email or knowing who you are. You could just print those out and take them to your next doctor visit. That is such a great tool, and I want to talk more about that. But we do have Fran here on the line. Fran, thank you for calling in tonight and getting us started on phone calls. It always is kind of the icebreaker once we have one person on the Never line. Never had a doctor before, and I'm 77. And I can't get any help. Fran, what do you think you need help with? How can we help you tonight? I've been through hell. <laughs> and I've lost my husband and my house and my children and my grandkids. And I've been abandoned. And I, all I can do is just cry. I am so yeah. sorry, Fran. Um, I, am. <laughs> I am so sorry. Do you do you have a piece of paper and a pencil handy? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Tom. Can you give her a number to call where she can get in touch with someone tomorrow? I sure can. She could even oh, call twenty-four-seven. Oh God, 24 that would be wonderful. Okay, hang on, Fran. We're yeah. going to get this number for you. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, twenty-four-twenty-four-seven. Yeah, 24, this number is available. <laughs> It's 800-273-8255. And can you repeat that, Carrie, so that... I sure um, will. Let me make sure, make sure I have sure it right. Um, Fran, and, and Tom said this number is available 24-7, so you could call it right now. Tom, make sure I'm correct in this. 800-273-8255. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 8255. Oh, God, there is a God. Yeah. Thank you. Fran, you call that number, and if you um, don't get through for some reason, you call us back, and we'll, we'll make sure you get to the right spot, I don't okay? Want, I, I, I don't want to be on the on TV. Oh, I understand. Will you call that number, okay? Thank you so much. I just need somebody all this time, and I hadn't been able to get anybody. I've never had a doctor. I've never. <laughs> all right, Fran, you call that number right now, okay? Thank you, Fran. Yeah, before y'all hang up. Sure. 
Or will somebody call me after y'all hang up? No, you need to call that number we just gave you. Did you write it down? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But you, you're not going to put me on TV. Well, you? well. The, you did call into a television show, and this is where our experts are. So right now you are on TV, and they have given you the phone number to call. And that, that phone number will not hook you up with somebody on TV. It will hook you up with someone who can help, okay? God bless you. Thank right. you. Thank you, Fran. Gosh, Thank you. You know, hearing Fran and hearing her tears, it really just puts into perspective that people are struggling right now. They are. You know, um, we had Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's and football bowl games. And now we kind of come to a point in the year to where there's nothing to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And in reflection, maybe we didn't handle the holidays very well ourselves. So this is our busiest time. And we're really giving out that toll free number, that 800 number is to a lifeline where people can call this hotline 24 seven whether it's suicide, needing local resources, um, just needing some emotional assurance, and they will put people in touch with mobile crisis or a local hospital or um, a local resource that they mm -hmm. can use. So that lifeline number is very important. And that's one of a lot of the similar calls we get every day from people like Fran. And I want to give that number again, and we're going to make a full screen so people can see it. 800-273-8255. Tom, you had said that when people go on your website and look for these screenings, um, evidence-based results. Can you tell me what evidence-based means? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I see lots of screenings when I'm standing in line at the grocery store, <laughs> yeah. whether it's a Cosmopolitan <laughs> magazine or uh, something like that. But these are scientifically valid and reliable tools. And you're thinking, how can a uh, the PHQ-9, which has nine questions for depression, or the GAD-7, which has seven questions for anxiety, how can these short uh, screenings be evidence-based and again they're not going to to diagnose you i mean it's that's where you go when you see a doctor or a therapist uh, but they at least give you an idea that if you're scoring moderately high or severe that's when you really need to think um you know i'm hitting this on a research-based tool and i need to act on it and then on the back end it tells you how to act is that right jackie Yes, Tom, that, that is correct. And Jackie, you were telling me that, um, you know, because our community is so diverse and so beautiful in that way, so are your services. They are. Uh, two of the screening tools, the one for depression and the one for anxiety, are both available in Spanish. And we also have three bilingual people on staff at the office who worked with our Latino and Latina community and they meet monthly with a group in Quintro Latino and they refer services and cases back and forth to each other. Uh, those ladies fortunately for us are very well versed in all that's available in the community and impact probably, probably a few hundred uh, families a year through our office. And one thing you were telling me is that um, when children maybe are brought here from a different country, um, they mm -hmm. in very well may need some services in dealing with that huge transition in life. They do. Um, some of our staff works with children who may have been separated at the border from their families and they have settled in Middle Tennessee with another family member. Sometimes it's a parent, sometimes it's an aunt or uncle, and we help get those children connected for legal services to make sure they're enrolled in school, to make sure they're getting seen by a medical provider, and helping with transportation, um, helping them with language barriers, with forms, and any documents that they need to complete so that they can access everything they're entitled to. Some people may be listening tonight and saying, I feel okay, but this is ringing the bell for my loved one or my best friend or my coworker. What are some signs that should be telltale signs to people that others are struggling mentally? 
Uh, Tom, you can chime in if I miss something, but but a, a big starter is changing mood, changing eating habits, changing sleeping habits, um, maybe dropping verbal cues. Uh, well, would you miss me if I were gone? Mm. Or how? what would y'all do without me? Um, you know, just, just different things. Uh, if somebody starts giving away personal effects, you know, hey, I know you've always wanted this particular item. Why don't you just go ahead and take it? Um, it just small little changes in language, nuance. If, if somebody's acting differently, there's probably a reason why. And Tom, is there a good place yeah. to yeah. to kind of how, how how should somebody approach that with somebody else? Because it can be a very tough topic. It is. You know what I have found, especially with men. Um, you know, I always thought that depression was having the blues. Mm -hmm. And um, and one time I even went to this union and I said, "We're going to talk about men in depression." Zero people showed up. <laughs> but the next month we held it, and it was men and how to get better sleep and be more productive and we had 103 men show up oh, wow and you know i think that if you are losing interest in something that's always interested you if you're irritable or angry you know we don't always associate that with depression um but i think that uh depression and anxiety too are sometimes mirror images of each other so look at your eating habits uh, look at your sleeping habits if you're thinking I'm fine, uh, my work, I brought it home, I'm working remotely and it's here, so I'm just gonna work 20 hours a day. That's not normal. You need to really ask yourself, what's, what's going on? Why am I doing this? Is it the loneliness, isolation, lack of self-worth? Um, and you know, we all need somebody to talk to. So I, I, I always think that it's just a good, good, good idea just to find somebody who um, is a great, listener, whether they're a, uh, a coach, um, a psychotherapist, a licensed therapist, um, an MD, your primary care physician, um, and our older adults are better at doing that, but they have a little stigma. The youth, they don't have any stigma, but, but all they do is take this in text. They yes, don't, they don't yes. know how to verbalize things. Uh -huh. So we, we need to, to meet in the middle. Right. Have you noticed over the past year, after we have endured so much, um, especially here in Middle Tennessee, have you have you all had an increase in demand for services? Yes. Yeah. The, the short answer is yes. We have been busier than we ever have because of COVID. Um, at first, it was the um, the anxieties. Um, our screenings were so high because of people worried about their loved ones getting COVID. Then once we were isolating, depression shot up. Mm. Uh, everybody sheltering in place, alone, at home. Um, and then we noticed that people were not um, using healthy coping skills. They were using alcohol and drugs and addiction mm. screenings shot up. And, uh, you know, in some months, we usually would average something like two or 300 screenings a month across the state. And I know in, in one month alone, we had over 5,000. So you really start looking at people trying to find help. Something's wrong. I don't know what it is. And, and they take two or three screenings and it gives them a head start. Wow, that's very insightful. Okay, we have to take another quick break. We still have another entire half hour to go. If you feel like you need to call in and get some questions answered, please do so. Number 615-737-PLUS. We're coming right back.